Hi guys, Ryan from Niche Facts here, and today I'm going to take a look at the Airbnb affiliate program. So there is a little bit of confusion about the Airbnb program. After I did my research, a lot of people aren't making a distinction between their formal affiliate program and then the more informal referral program. So first with the referral program, this is more of like a family and friends type of thing where, you know, if you really enjoy Airbnb as a customer, uh, Airbnb as a customer, you know, you can refer your, your family, your friends, and have them join. And so essentially you are rewarding uh, or earning credit that you can redeem and it's capped at $5,000. So the way they explain it, you're getting up to $95 per user, you get to sign up. So that's not really where the make money online uh, publishers are going to experience the, the greatest benefits from working with Airbnb. Where you'll wanna be if you're interested in promoting Airbnb is in the Airbnb affiliate program. And now I don't actually know the commission structure for this, and that's because uh, it's you have to you know be pre-approved, and they they have their own affiliate network apparently. So there's an, the Airbnb affiliate network, and then the program obviously sits within their own affiliate network. And the reason for this is they have a very high standard for for joining. So you know it's. This is one of those affiliate programs, you know, it's not one of those auto approve, uh, you know, share a sale programs where you just join and you're automatically improved and you can promote whatever, whatever you want, however you want, essentially. This is a much more exclusive option. So they say you need one monthly, uh, one million monthly visits either on uh, an app or your website to qualify. And so, if you do qualify, you have the option of promoting the uh, signups as guests. So getting people to sign up and actually purchase, you know, um, rooms or you know whatever whatever Airbnb has in stock for for guests, and then you can promote it as a host. And so getting people to sign up and uh, become hosts on the platform. So those are the, the two primary ways that you can earn money uh, through Airbnb's affiliate program. And so I just wanted to take a look at uh, some of the, uh, an example of a site that, that I like. And I'm not really big into travel. So, you know, I had to, you know, Google around to see some travel sites that I thought would be interesting examples. One site that is doing it sort of in the, you know, uh, travel search engine aggregation model is Hitmonk. And so I, I just ran like a general query to try to find like an Airbnb affiliate link in the wild. So you can see I, I, I basically did something like New York to uh, Nevada. And if you scroll down, you see within the search results, you know, there's, there's uh, hotels and hotels but over here, you can see, you know, with the Airbnb logo is this option right here. So if you, if you click select, you know, you're redirected to, to Airbnb. So that's, that's an affiliate link. You can see, you know, all the tracking parameters over there. So Hipmonk has been in the Airbnb affiliate program for a while. You know, I was reading that Airbnb had an affiliate program and they canceled it. So apparently Hipmonk has been in it uh, before they canceled it and then re recently reinstated it. So that's that's an example of one of these you know, travel aggregation sites. I don't have much experience in, in building out something like this. This is, you know, travel is a very competitive niche, but I do have some strategies that you know, if you, if you want to promote Airbnb, uh, like how I would think about creating content that, that ranks. So one of the first sites that I stumbled across that's not one of these aggregators is, you know, I was just looking around online for, you know, different travel sites and I found, you know, there's a million of these sites that list out best travel blogs. So 
you know, if you need inspiration, if you're if you're trying to create a travel site and you want to participate, you know, in the Airbnb affiliate program, or even there's a variety of other travel affiliate programs. You know, I know Expedia has their has a, an affiliate program, and so that you know, you don't have to constrain yourself just to Airbnb. It's, you know, so if you you don't need necessarily a million visits a month to actually. Um, you know, earn earn revenue from promoting travel or travel related deals. So anyway, I found this site. This is helpful just for having a list of different uh, travel blogs that you can get inspiration from. So I found this one, Amateur Traveler, which I thought was pretty cool. So just in terms of how I would think about getting traffic for travel, um, to be able to push travel traffic to affiliate partners. This is an example of a site that I like a lot. And the reason why is because it's a very holistic, it's a very holistic approach to, you know, creating content and getting traffic. It's not just, you know, publishing, you know, 50 low quality articles and then waiting for SEO to kick in. You know, that it's, you know, you can do that, but it's, if you really want to succeed, online in general, you're going to want to have a more comprehensive approach. So this guy's got a podcast. He's got uh, a YouTube channel. And I shouldn't say he, because he's probably at this point, he's probably a bit bigger than just one individual. But you can see he's, you know, he's got a YouTube channel. It doesn't have a ton of traffic, but, or a ton of subscribers, but, um, you know, he's got an Instagram, which obviously lends itself to, to travel quite well. Again, not a ton, but you know these are sort of the the ancillary traffic acquisition um, strategies that you can practice. And this is what I endorse as well: is like you have your website, but then you're making an effort to you know create content cross channel. You know, he's got his Pinterest over here, eleven thousand followers. So he's creating lots of content and he's spreading out across all these different channels. And that's that's something that I really like. And he also has a podcast, and that's you know another another great strategy for. And I think he's a lot of podcasts as well. If I remember correctly, like yeah, look at this. I mean, over six hundred episodes, and that's pretty insane. So he's probably driving a ton of traffic to his website from from his podcast. That's probably after his website, probably the, the second biggest. Um, traffic channel for him so if I were to promote Airbnb like one of the strategies you know SEO obviously would be a really good opportunity so what I did was I, I ran Airbnb through Ahrefs to see some of their top performing keywords and then I just removed a lot of the Airbnb misspellings just to get a very um, more of a filtered view of different keywords that they rank for so you can see like if you scroll through this this keyword list like you'll get an idea of, this is the sort of content that you know would appeal to people that are looking to you know book a room with Airbnb for example so one of the themes that, that's really apparent in here is stuff like things to do in San Diego things to do in Chicago so if I was creating a site, this is stuff that I would look at, look at generating content for. And then if you, you condense the, the columns a little bit, you can kind of compare the difficulty with the volume. And so if I was starting a new site, for example, this is, you know, I would really be trying to pick off a lot of these low competition keywords. I'd find stuff like things to do in Boston. You know, that's 22. It's not that, that's not that hard. I mean, Sometimes the keyword research is a little bit misleading, but I generally, I would just recommend, you know, you're not just trying to rank for this term. So if you did things to do in Boston, you listed out like 20 sites or 20, like, you know, 10 museums and five restaurants, like you would rank for those individual terms, like the restaurant name, potentially, you know, people maybe typing in Boston Italian food and you listed out a restaurant, you know, that best Italian restaurants on that page. Like you have to think about it dynamically. These are just 
Think of these as more like seed keywords uh, for content inspiration. So that's one of the themes that I, that's really apparent in here is like people are looking for this things to do, things to do in Paris, what to do in Boston. And you can just scroll through this yourself. You can even search it. Like if you type in things to do, you get 111 results. You can scroll through Portland, Austin, Phoenix, Toronto, it's endless. So that's one thing that I like. It's one theme that I found that I thought was very interesting. And then I even pulled out some, some rental keywords uh, with a, like a max difficulty, uh, according to Ahrefs at 15. So like, there's stuff like houseboat rental, RV rental. So that's even a whole different theme. You know, there's there's different types of stuff on here. Like, honestly, I don't really use Airbnb. So if you do, you probably have a, a better idea of the different offerings and experiences that you can promote. So to me, this is all kind of new. You know, rental RVs. I guess people can rent houseboats, yachts. That's pretty crazy. So that's another kind of angle you can take. And so another another sort of content inspiration uh, strategy that I looked into was like TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor, it's a massive website. There's tons of user-generated content. And what that means is that if you if you look at, use Ahrefs to kind of look at organic keyword rankings for user-generated content sites, you're going to find like these instances where there's like, they rank really high for things with decent volume and like very low competition. So that's what we were seeing here. It's because people are creating content around stuff that there isn't existing content on the internet oftentimes. So like, for instance, Whitewater Amphitheater, like no one really has gone online and created a comprehensive, you know, authority site that discusses Whitewater Amphitheater. So, you know, Google is really just serving up, you know, the user generated content that occurs in TripAdvisor. So that, I listed out two examples just, you know, from within this keyword research table, like Whitewater Amphitheater has a difficulty score of zero. And, you know, it's getting 7,300 searches a month just for that term. And like I said before, there's going to be so many variations of, of, for terms like this that you'd end up ranking for if you created content around it. So the idea really is, you know, you create content around Whitewater Amphitheater, Argosy, Casino, Mango Bay, the social Orlando. You know, people are searching for these 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 places online. They're probably planning a trip. So obviously it's a it's a really it would be a place where you could promote Airbnb. You know, oh if you want to go to Whitewater Amphitheater, well here, stay over. You could stay in an Airbnb location that's a couple blocks away. So that that's really how I think about it. Like if I were starting a site in the travel niche, this would be one of the ways I would I would promote it. Would be just to, to pick off a lot of these keywords, create content around them across different platforms, and that would be kind of the comprehensive strategy that I think would enable you to succeed promoting an affiliate partner like Airbnb. So obviously you can do email and social. One, one stipulation I would, I would make is that if you were to get into the Airbnb affiliate program, you'd want to examine the affiliate agreement to make sure that you understand where you can promote the actual affiliate links. There's a lot of restrictions usually on promotion on social and within email. Like I know some programs want to pre-approve email copy or they don't want you sending out affiliate links within email so that's something you'd want to to be aware of and then I kind of make the point here that you know if if you even qualify for Airbnb like you don't need me telling you what to do with email and social like you I'm sure you have you know if you've got a million people coming to your site you probably already have a pretty solid understanding of what you're doing with an internet marketing but in general if you're new to the travel niche it's not that complicated. You want to be creating content across different platforms. You want it to be 
um, you know, contextually formatted for different social, obviously, you know, Pinterest is long and narrow images and things like that. Like you'd really just want to sketch out a content creation strategy. You know, if you were doing Bush Gardens, Virginia, you'd want to have a really nicely format formatted post on your site all the on-page SEO aspects. You want it to be long form so it gets traffic and then maybe create a small YouTube video, sort of like what I'm doing now. Like I wrote this whole Airbnb affiliate program post and now I'm creating a video for it to drive traffic to it. And then it's not just a, you know, a bunch of slides on the internet. I mean, on, on YouTube, it, I'm actually creating custom content for YouTube as as a uh, social media platform so that's that's my my examination of it I, I wish that I could actually say what the commission structure is for the Airbnb affiliate program but it is you know it's a it's very exclusive it's and they're not I, I looked around the internet a lot and I couldn't really find any clarification right now about what it is but it is important to understand that there is this primary distinction between their formal affiliate program and then the referral program. So that's my examination of the Airbnb affiliate program. And if you like these uh, affiliate program, affiliate network reviews, I'm doing a bunch of them on the site. So you could head over to nichefacts.com and scroll down to the bottom over here where there's affiliate program reviews. You know, I recently did a WordPress affiliate program review. I've taken a look at Dell, Adidas, Nike, Uber, Home Depot, Wayfair, Walmart. So all these ways, all of these uh, programs are ways that you can monetize a site, especially if you're interested in diversifying outside of you know traditional AdSense or Amazon associate monetization strategies. So if you like this video, leave a like and sign up to my email list on site. And I send out, you know, niche opportunities like this, my reviews of different programs. And then also I do a lot of stuff around kind of weird authority sites. Like this one is like ranking for telephone numbers. It's a really weird SEO niche where these sites just rank for telephone numbers and then, you know, make money through AdSense. It's pretty crazy. So that's my, my video. Thanks. Thank you.